Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 9th of August. Um, as always, if this is useful to you, um, please like, subscribe, comment and share. It really does help get word out of this update and help more people. And as I kind of said last week, my goal is to get this out by 11 o'clock um, Central Time every Sunday. So you can kind of have a, a, a routine of when you know I'm going to release this. So I haven't actually created any other new videos this week. I took the Data Essentials, the DB900 exam, and I'm working on doing kind of an exam cram video. I want to record that this afternoon. So that's basically been all of my spare time this week and yesterday, Saturday, prepping and planning and researching for that. So hopefully a few hours after I post this, um, I'll actually get that uploaded as well. Something I did want to quickly remind, um, I am speaking live on Wednesday at the Singapore Azure User Group. So this is kind of 7 a.m. Uh, Central Time, which is 8 p.m. Singapore Time, but it's open to anyone. You can just go along to that and sign up. If you want to hear me talk about Azure AD whiteboarding live for an hour and ask me other stuff as well. I wanted to do a quick clarification on something. Um, in the past, I spoke about Azure AD administrative units. I spoke about management groups, and I think there's some confusion about what they are and where they kind of fit in. So super quickly, it's kind of came up as a question last week because they're really um, kind of orthogonal to each other. If I think about Azure AD, with Azure AD, I have kind of all my various users, my groups, and there are various roles that apply to Azure AD. Uh, maybe it's global administrator, maybe it's do with Office, but they're Azure AD specific. And ordinarily, I can give a user um, a role and it applies to all of Azure AD. So what administrative units do is administrative units let me create this administrative unit. I can place users in that administrative unit and then grant a role at the administrative unit level. So it's a way to delegate an Azure AD role to a subset of the Azure AD population. Then we have management groups. So I think about management groups around Azure resources and Azure subscriptions. Now I have a root management group, which is about management groups here, and that's kind of directly underneath Azure AD. And then I can have a whole hierarchy of other management groups until eventually I get to Azure subscriptions. Now, Azure has its own roles. They are separate from Azure AD roles. So for the Azure Resource Manager, I also have various types of roles, which are groups of actions. Hey, I can uh, perform this type of action against this type of resource in a resource provider. And I can grant those roles, role-based access control, at these various levels. So I can apply an RBAC for those Azure roles at management group levels. I can also apply it at the subscription and even a resource group, and it will get inherited down. But they are Azure resource manager roles, not Azure AD roles. So they are two completely separate sets of roles. So think about administrative units. Hey, they're to grant Azure AD roles to a subset of the population. So I'm going to get a role that only applies to a subset of the users or groups. Um, as a resource manager, management groups let me assign roles that get inherited down to actual Azure resources. So I had to kind of quickly cover that because I, I saw there's quite a few comments around confusion and people contacted me. So I did want to quickly um, clear that up. Okay, so what's new? So now with Azure Backup, I could always do backup of Azure Virtual Machines. For Windows, it actually calls the Volume Shadow Copy Service, so it's a kind of app consistent backup. For Linux, it can do a kind of a freeze, but it backed up the OS and all data disks. That was the backup, that was the restore. Now I can actually do a selective disk backup. 
So maybe there's only certain disks I care about. I don't want to back up everything. I just want to get this particular disk because that's maybe where the key app data is. That's what I want to be able to quickly restore. So now I have this ability to selectively pick what I back up. That's going to accelerate the backup, accelerate the restore and save me money because I'm saving less data. So that's now available in public preview. On the networking side, um, this is a, a compliance um, standard that has now been reached by Azure France. So this is really important around kind of the mobile networks. Azure is doing a huge amount around kind of mobile and 5G. Um, they just purchased Affirmed, they just purchased Metaswitch networks. They're all around 5G and border gateway services. So this is just kind of an important regulatory compliance standard that Azure France has to be able to participate um, kind of in that mobile world uh, in France. On the storage side, so another Azure backup, it now integrates directly in the portal with Azure File. So that is now GA. So if you actually go over, so let's jump over to the portal super, super quickly. If we actually look at a storage account, if we go and look at file shares, and actually look at a particular file share, you'll now see there's backup integrated straight in. So with that backup capability, I can actually now go and, oh, there we go, it's finally waking up. So with that Azure backup, now directly from this pane, I'll actually be able to go in. I can say, hey, I, I want to use this backup policy. And I can do all those same types of attention. If I did a new policy, for example, I can say, hey, I want to retain a daily for 30 days, a weekly for um, eight weeks, a monthly for 24 months, uh, an annual yearly backup for seven years. And the key point about this type of integration, and that's different maybe from a lot of the other backup solutions, is that when I use this Azure backup with Azure Files, the actual storage is still Azure Files. So I can think about, well, there's kind of the storage account. I have the files. And what the Azure backup is actually doing is it's controlling, hey, go and take a snapshot. So the actual backup is not copied over to the recovery services vault. The backup becomes a snapshot over here where the files live. So that's super fast backup, super fast instant kind of recovery. So Azure Backup is just saying, hey, based on the interval we've configured, the backup policy we have, go and take a snapshot. It's also saying, hey, based on the policy, I have kind of these retention configurations. So it will go and delete snapshots based on what my retention configuration is. So unlike a lot of other backup solutions, integration with Azure Backup, it's not copying the data to the recovery services vault. Azure Backup is kind of that engine that says, hey, go and take the snapshot, and then, hey, go and delete these ones that aren't required anymore. So it's behaving a little bit differently um, from what we see with a lot of other backup integrations. For MariaDB, so MariaDB is one of the Azure database uh, offerings. There's also Postgres, uh, there's also MySQL. So MariaDB is kind of a fork of MySQL. These are all open source based on the community edition, but fully managed. So it's a PaaS database offering. Well, there's now a 16 terabyte and 20,000 IOPS version of MariaDB uh, that you can go ahead and leverage. Also, there are now additional regions for the blob storage object replication. And that's still public preview. I did talk about this before. Essentially, they've just added more regions. Um, I think it's East US 2 and Central US. Remember, the point of this is this is completely separate from the storage account. So ordinarily, at a storage account, I could say GRS, and it will asynchronously replicate to the paired region. What this does is imagine I have kind of my storage account, and then I can have different containers. So I could have container one, I could have container two. Then I might have another storage account. So this is, let's say, in region one, I have this storage account. Now in region two, 
I have a different storage account. And maybe I've got a region three. I've got another storage account as well. So I would create a container. Again, I have to have the containers already exist. And I've got another container over here as well. And what I can configure is say, hey, this container, go and replicate async. It's all asynchronous because it's between regions. For performance, it has to be async. This container will go and replicate over there. So I can go and replicate to different containers in different regions. It gives me a lot more flexibility um, to control what I'm doing now. So it's still public preview. But they've really lit this up now for additional regions. I can only be a member of kind of one pair. I can't replicate to multiple different containers. I can't replicate to and receive from. It's one relationship. I'm one way or the other. Lifecycle management is now available for Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. So this is all about if we think there are kind of um, different tiers um, for storage. So if I think about Block Blob, which is actually what ADLS Gen 2 sits on top of, we have the idea, well, there's, there's a hot tier, um, there's a cool tier, and then there's an archive tier. And what we can do is, let's say I have my, my blobs, I can move them, put them in different tiers. So hot is obviously instantly available, um, it costs the most money to store it. Cool is still instantly available, but I pay more for the transactions, but less for the storage. Archive is not instantly available, but it's the cheapest option. And so ADLS Gen 2 actually sits on top of Blob. Um, it makes it Hadoop compatible, HDFS. It's a hierarchical namespace, um, POSIX style ACLs. So because it sits on top of Blob, we have this concept of kind of this life cycle management. So with lifecycle management, I can create rules, policies to say, hey, look, if this data has not been accessed for seven days, um, move it from hot to cool. If it's not been used for another 30 days, we'll then move it from cool to archive. And it's really about making my spend as efficient as possible. By moving it between the tiers, I reduce my costs each time. So rather than manually having to do it, the lifecycle management rules will go and do that for me. So the key point is now, hey, this was available for Blob for a long time. Now, ADLS Gen 2, which again sits on Blob, can take advantage of that as well. So definitely want to use that tiering to kind of optimize our cost. And miscellaneous things, Azure Advisor now has the ability to multiple select and execute the kind of quick fix. So some things the Azure Advisor finds that there's a simple fix for. Hey, you haven't got this feature turned on. Well, now I can actually go, if we go and look at our um, Azure Advisor. If I go and look at all recommendations, let's say same of a quick fix. Okay, secure transfer should be enabled. So if I select this, you'll actually notice now I can kind of bulk select. I can select all of them and say remediate. So rather than having to kind of one at a time select, remediate, hey, I can just select all of them now and kind of bulk do the remediation, uh, save myself some time. <laughs> who watches the watchman? Um, who logs the logger? So Azure Monitor logs, when I perform queries, now we're gonna have that same ability through diagnostic settings to actually capture the details of what was the query? Who ran the query? What were kind of those result type things? Um, to blob, um, to event hub, to log analytics. So I'll now actually be able to audit who is doing things um, actually with Azure Monitor Logs queries. So it gives me kind of some capabilities. I actually be able to see the queries that were executed. Azure Security Center. I actually had a whole bunch of enhancements, many of them I've spoken about previously, um, some that I hadn't. The vulnerability assessment now works for non-marketplace images. So the vulnerability assessment is built on Qualys. Um, it's an extension that runs in Windows and Linux VMs and helps find vulnerabilities. Before it was only marketplace images this would work on. Well now, 
it will work for non-market places. Well, if I have my own custom ones, I can still go and use that extension. And there's also improved performance for scanning container images in the Azure Container Registry. So we now have kind of that, that better performance there. It's going to scan through faster. And that's it for this week. So as always, please comment below. Um, love to see your interactions. But uh, until next week, uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Stay safe.